After losing back-to-back -back series to Chicago and Boston, we're asking, is this offense doomed without Aaron Judge? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. With me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granado. Steve, what is going on? Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Uh, of course, we mentioned Aaron Judge at the top. We're going to talk about him a little bit later on in the show about his timeline. It's a bit uncertain about when he's going to return. We're going to get on into that and some other injuries a little bit later. Of course, it's Monday, so it's Miners Monday. We'll take a look at some of some incredible pitching this week uh, in the Yankee system. A lot to look forward to here in the Yankees' future, as usual. But of course, Stacey, weekend series against Boston. First time the Yanks and Red Sox meet. Boston takes two of three very close ball games. Uh, your thoughts overall here over the weekend, especially considering the Yankees' offense? What offense? <laughs> <laughs> what offense Fair. and for both teams i mean each game that was one was three runs they were one with three runs no one was hitting um it, it just yeah i mean i'm not mad that oh they lost two out of three of the red sox i'm more upset with the fact that you have guys who are capable of hitting in that lineup and they're not hitting right now and it feels like the loss of aaron judge is the loss of like five guys in the lineup it's just the strangest thing I've seen ever because you didn't see old Yankee teams. Like if they lost Derek Jeter, they were fine without him. If they lost a rod, they were fine without him. This team just falls apart without Aaron judge. Sunday night, three, two loss in extra innings. Clark Schmidt quickly. Stacy has looked miles better, miles better recently. Yeah. Um, he's held opponents to a two, three, three ERA through his last five starts. The only blemish was the one home run to Justin Turner, but he pitched five and a third, gave up four hits. That one run didn't walk anyone and struck out four. And, you know, we'll talk about Herman in a moment, but those two guys are really stepping up right now. Yeah, Yankees only scored twice. Um, they had a couple of chances there. Of course, Volpe ends up striking out to end the game in the 10th. Of course, the air, we could get into that really, but let's not get into that, Stacey. I mean, we all know how everybody feels about that. Um, yeah. What a catch and left, by the way, by McKinney. Oh, yeah. Like, side note. Uh, yeah. But ba back to the main topic. I mean, that's an incredible catch. Yeah. Uh, back to the main topic here. Without Aaron Judge, how doomed is this team? Let, let's let's be real for a second. How how bad is it from your purview? Well, okay, let's bring this back a second because I kind of freaked out a little bit too early, uh, too much earlier. They're also without Rizzo because Rizzo is not Rizzo since he hurt his neck. Okay, yeah. so if Rizzo was the way he was before he hurt his neck, the Yankees might be okay because Rizzo has been their best player all year. So you're also pretty much without Rizzo in the lineup too these past few games he hasn't had a hit since judge ran through the wall at dodger stadium just That's fyi crazy. so a week yeah yeah with the Muslims, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so it's more it's more that rizzo isn't really doing anything right now um but you know the loss of judge is big but other guys really need to step it up and they're not. And that's just what's frustrating about it. But they can't do this all season because what if something else happens to judge? What if this timeline is even longer than they thought? And he's out for another few weeks because something's worse. He has something wrong with his toe that's worse than what they thought. What are they going to do? The great toe. I've been yeah. calling my big toe, by the way, the great toe ever <laughs> since that PR tweet. Um, <laughs> I think what's crazy here is you're seeing – uh, I, I just saw Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse for the second time uh, since it came out, by the way. I just came from that uh, right before the game started on Sunday. So you're seeing a different universe or, or you're, you're seeing what could have been a different universe for the Yankees. This is what would have been potentially had the arson judge tweet been real. Right. <laughs> which is wild. Which yeah. is wild. This could have been the Yankees. This very well could have been the Yankees. They would I mean, have been a lot is. worse, yeah. though. But they would have been sure. a lot worse if he didn't come back. You know, yeah. I mean, right now they're nine games over 500, which 
in a normal season would be fine, but the Rays and the Orioles are doing so much better than them that it's kind of magnified as them being, you know, some people are calling them mediocre. And I said, in what world is a team that's over five, uh, nine games over 500 mediocre, but in this AL East, they are. (laughs) Sure. But I mean, like without judge, they, I mean, the offense is yeah right. It's crazy. It's crazy. And like you said, there's Rizzo's not hitting right now and you can't expect them to hit all year long, but it, it, I mean, it is night and day without Aaron judge crazy it's yeah. it's truly crazy let us know in the comment section how you're feeling about this i know you guys can't be super happy who is your pick by the way let us know to step up rizzo's not hitting judge isn't in the lineup no bader who's stepping up who is your picks let us know in the comment section down below here on youtube saturday the only win stacy a 3-1 victory over boston you mentioned domingo Herman. Amazing. Six innings, one run. Devers, of course, because Devers always hits a home run. Uh, Two walks, five strikeouts. And since May 1st, I love this. (laughs) He is a 2.20 ERA. He's sixth best among qualified starters in Major League Baseball. He's allowed one earned run or fewer in five of his seven starts in that span of time. So, yeah, he's been basically the Yankees' best pitcher since May 1st. (laughs) Sticky free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Sticky free since June three. I don't know. I was trying to do a rhyme. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. Uh, Cause you know, we've been talking about this rotation all year long. Garrett Cole has been pitching better over his last couple of outings, uh, but has not been April Garrett Cole. And even still, that's only every five days. So, but also he, he needs to be April Garrett Cole because the offense isn't scoring. You can't yeah. give up. Like if you give up more than two runs, you're doomed because yeah. the offense isn't scoring. Well, I mean, we mentioned Clark Schmidt here moments ago and and we've been talking about that. He's, he's the new Jordan Montgomery. He's just not getting run support and it happened again to him uh, mm-hmm. despite Clark pitching better lately. And now Domingo's pitching well. And luckily, you know, Glaber goes deep. Willie Calhoun goes deep. Um, and, and you pick up that Saturday victory. Uh, Friday night's loss, Stacey, a 3-2 loss. Garrett Cole takes the loss first time this year. Yes. You know, I know people are complaining about him, and I know people also talk about how wins and losses don't matter. But it is kind of amazing it took until, you know, the second weekend in June for him to get his first loss officially. So good on him for that. Only one home run. (laughs) (laughs) And it was a homerless streak, too, that that ended up being broken up there for, for Garrett Cole. Yeah, six, six innings, two runs, seven hits, a walk and six strikeouts. I mean, those numbers will play. I'll take those numbers any day of the week. Yeah. I mean, if the offense was doing better, that would be a really good. I mean, it's a quality start and it would be a win for other teams, but not with this offense. And speaking of that, that ball be foul ball. Oh, my gosh, man. That was so close. That was so close. Off the bat, I thought. Off the bat, every, off the bat everybody thought. Oh, uh, yeah. You saw how mad he was too after it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like once, once the end of the game there. Yeah. yeah. Was, two, uh... two chances for Volpe to play the hero over the weekend. And of course, coincidentally, both games ended up being the losses in the series. I mean, I'm not blaming Volpe here, but uh, it is weird how it came down to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, it's not totally his fault. It's the rest of the offense not really doing anything. And no offense to Billy McKinney, no offense to Jake Bowers, no offense to Willie Calhoun, but they shouldn't be the ones that are getting doubles and home runs and stuff. You know, guys like Stanton, guys like LeMayhew, guys like Rizzo, Glaber, you know, he contributed a bit there, but those guys really need to step up. Yeah. How about that catch for Jake Bowers? Yes. Um, uh, Yeah. In left field also. (laughs) Like what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here's something, Stacey. I wanted to touch on this quickly because obviously this is the first time the Yankees got to see Boston this year. Yeah. And we've been talking about Boston. We've had state of the AL East episodes. We've talked about the AL East. We talked about Boston. We've talked about Baltimore and Tampa. Obviously, we've talked about the AL East a lot this year. Everybody has. And what we've continuously said, and maybe more, this is on my part about the Red Sox, has been they're overperforming. They're overperforming. They're overperforming. I've said that what three, four, maybe five times on the show. <laughs> yeah. At what point does overperforming become this is how they perform? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I still don't think they're as good as they've been playing lately. But lately has been two and a half months. Hmm. I mean, they're still barely over 500. (laughs) (laughs) They're playing, but they're They're without Chris Sale. They're without Chris Sale. Corey Kluber had to be moved to the bullpen. You know, uh, 
Hauk and Whitlock are stepping up. Bayo is stepping up. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they're still playing above their heads because it's baseball and a team can play good for two months and then horribly for four months. So, you know, I just, I think they'll be okay because I really feel like the AL East is going to have four teams above 500 and one just around 500. I feel like Boston's going to be that team, but I don't know. I still don't think they're as good as they're playing right now. And are they really playing that good? It's more the Yankees are just playing terribly this weekend. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for Glaber and, uh, oh, God, that play in <laughs> the ninth inning don't that allowed Kike to don't score. Touch it. Don't touch it. Not <laughs> it's worth just, it. It's just, it's the Yankees lost that game more than Boston won it. That's all I'll say. Hey, all I'm saying is, we keep saying they're playing above their heads. <laughs> point, push comes to shove, man. Uh, let us know in the comment section. Do you believe the Boston Red Sox are playing better than they should? Or is this the real Boston Red Sox? Let us know down in the comment section. Of course, while you're there, drop your questions for Fan Mail Friday. If you're new around these parts, we do Fan Mail episodes on every Friday. Every Friday is Fan Mail Friday. You can leave your questions in the comment section, and we will answer our favorites coming up at the end of the week. Hey, off day today, another one. There's two this week. Uh, every Monday is an off day here in the month of June, but of course, the Subway Series starts on Tuesday. You can catch that on Sirius XM coming up. It is Miners Monday, so let's talk. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time after all it's easy to bring home a championship when the right parts are guaranteed get the right parts the right fit and the right prices on ebaymotors.com let's ride ebay guaranteed fit is only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply Back now on Locked On Yankees. Hey, thanks so much for making us your first listen of the day every day here to the everydayers out there. Coming up on Tuesday, of course, we have the off day today. We have the Subway Series, and we have Ryan Finkelstein from Locked On Mets to chat with us. We're going to talk all thing Mets Yankees, so that's coming up on tomorrow's show, so make sure to hit subscribe, and you won't miss it. Stacy, it's Miners Monday, and for everydayers, they obviously know what Miners Monday is, but if you're new around these parts, we check in on the Yankee system every single Monday to give you the top performers, storylines, and everything you need to know to make sure you're a well-rounded Yankees fan. So let's go ahead and do that today. And I want to talk a lot about pitching. We like to talk about pitching here on Lock on Yankees. I love it. I love mm -hmm. talking pitching. And there were some great performances. Let's start in high A with the Hudson Valley Renegades. Drew Thorpe, number six prospect, right-handed pitcher, had a great outing back on June 4th against Aberdeen. This week, the Hudson Valley Renegades media department called his start on Sunday, quote, one of the best starts that the Renegades have ever gotten, which that's a, that's some serious praise. Seven shutout frames, 12 strikeouts, which is a Hudson Valley franchise best dating back to 2005, which is how far online records go. Over his last two starts, Stacey, 15 shutout frames, six hits, two walks, and 19 strikeouts. And I know we've had this conversation on a handful of occasions, but I think it bears repeating. What we love to do on Miners Monday is, is really showcase these guys that otherwise don't get the limelight, right? But I think it is always fair to credit the Yankees staff as a whole minors majors front office they are so good <laughs> at developing pitching it is truly remarkable what they're able to do and drew thorpe is another one just another guy that is going out shoving day in and day out his last two starts i mean what more do you want out of these guys i mean if you're going seven innings in high a baseball you are doing seriously something good right 
Uh, so that's incredible. It's just guys that you always want to keep your eye out for. And it could be, I mean, we've had unranked guys this season where we're just amazed at what they're able to do. And Drew Thorpe does it again here again, last two outings, 15 shutout innings. Uh, we're going to stay on the theme of pitching today, Stace Somerset. Now we've talked a lot about Somerset pitching. Yeah. From, from like day, from the very first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first Miners Monday. Yeah. We've talked about Somerset pitching. Here we go again. <laughs> it is like, I, I can't wait for five, 10 years down the line where we go look back, man, do you remember the 2023 Somerset Patriots? Here we go again. Blaine Abeda, career high 11 strikeouts. He didn't have his best stuff elsewhere. He goes six and two thirds, nine hits and five earned. So there's obviously still lots to work with there, but Blaine Abeda strikes out a career high 11. Clayton Beater, uh, a Miners Monday alum at this point, let's say. Yeah. yeah. Also struck out 11 on Tuesday, second time. He has done that this season. That's the team high, by the way. So three different Somerset Patriots pitchers this year have now struck out uh, 11. Well, I guess two different three times. Right. Uh, Ho-hum, Sunday, five shutout. So he pitched twice. He pitched the opener on Tuesday and then pitched the the final game of the six-game series on Sunday. Clayton Beater, you thought 15 shutout from Drew Thorpe was good. Clayton Beater currently on a 21 and a third straight scoreless innings that's four outings Clayton Peters out of his mind right now uh he has the second best earned run average in the Eastern League he is just living up to all the hype and I want you to remember this Stacy. do you remember how Clayton Beater got to the Yankee system I do <laughs> the Joey Gallo the trade Joey Gallo trade yep what a find what <laughs> a find uh we might see him get called up here soon. I'm anticipating. I would say in about a month's time, we're closing in on the MLB draft in the 9th through the 11th in July. So the draft is coming up soon. There's obviously some shuffling that goes on after that in the uh, in all systems. So I think we might see Clayton Beater get the call here soon to AAA ball because he pitched in the uh, the Dodgers system with Tulsa in double a also in the Eastern league. So he's been in the Eastern league for a good chunk of time at this point. And uh, I mean, he doesn't have much left to prove anymore. 20 and one in a third scoreless innings over four outings. Oh, Oh, sorry. Totally forgot. Richard Fitz, you know, just struck out 10 batters in eight innings too. <laughs> eight innings, eight innings. Wow. For a double a pitcher to go eight innings. Uh, that was the longest outing in the Yankees affiliated era for Somerset baseball. That's Somerset impressive. pitching, man. It's just it three years, three years time, four years time. Get ready in New York. Cause well, there is, I mean, unless they trade them all away or that, or <laughs> <Yeah>. that, <laughs> uh, Pitching is coming, man. Pitching yeah. is coming. It's crazy. Um, and I didn't want to be only pitching here this week. Stacey's Tampa's offense went bananas this week. Bananas. Uh, they just barely missed sweeping Lakeland, uh, the Flying Tigers. Of course, Tiger affiliate. They won the first five and then lost the game on Sunday. They outscored Lakeland 51-31. to 31. Of course, they did give up a lot of runs. That's, that's, uh, that's Florida baseball for you. <laughs> but scored 51 runs in six games. Jared Cerna, uh, homer three times, also went deep on Sunday. He drove in eight runs and six game played after an 0 for 5 stint on Tuesday. Just went crazy uh, over the next couple of games. If you missed the conversation that we had with John Brophy of Yankees Pinstripe Prospects, uh, we talked all about Jared Cerna a couple of days ago. So I'll leave an episode link down in the description here on YouTube and, of course, in the show notes on our audio side. We just had that chat, and it was a great chat with uh, John Brophy, so make sure you check that out. But, man, a, another banner week. Didn't even talk about a Stevon Florial. He had another good week. Yeah. The Riders. Like, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of really good performances, and, and that continues to be the case. So make sure to, to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another Miners Monday because, man, the Yankee system is going real strong right now. Uh, hey, let us know which – prospects you want to hear about we love telling you that and of course you guys asked for jared cerna and we talked about jared cerna last week so you guys drive the show make sure to let us know in the comment section down below and of course you can leave your questions for fan mail friday the subway series starts after an off day today tuesday night catch all the action on sirius xm get yourself a free 
trial. Coming up, we got to talk about Aaron Judge and some other injuries for you. It is time to talk about injuries, timelines. We mentioned Judge. We're going to start with Judge because this great toe injury is, it looks like a problem. <laughs> yeah, the great toe. The, the, the big great toe of 2023. <laughs> uh, Athletic saying this, Boone said there's no timeline for when Judge might return to play and there likely won't be any further update until swelling in his toe has subsided. The great big toe. <laughs> The great big toe. Which is greater and bigger because it's swollen and they can't. And do. it's Aaron Judge. Yeah. Stacey, this is, I mean, we, we obviously touched on it in the beginning. Uh, and we asked Locked On Yankees viewers on YouTube to let us know who's going to step up in his absence. But do you have a pick for somebody to step up in his absence that isn't named Anthony Rizzo? <laughs> I was hoping it'd be Glaber. He kind of is, but. It would be nice for Glaber to step up. Um, I would yeah. really like for, like, DJ doesn't have to step up in a way where he's hitting home runs all the time, but DJ needs to hit the ball. Just hit it. That's all I want is for DJ to hit yeah. the ball. Maybe some singles. That's that's really it. But I, I, I think Glaber. I say Glaber. Is it too big a hole to fill? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a six foot seven, two eighty two hole. I mean, it's a big hole to fill. It's. You know, a guy who can bat over 300 and not just home runs. And, you know, he's the guy that you want up in the bottom of the ninth when they're down by a run and you need something to happen. And I feel like they don't have that right now. Yeah. I mean, they're just not getting the big hit, right? They couldn't get the big hit on Friday, couldn't get the big hit on Sunday. And, uh, you know, you lose that series, you lose a series to Chicago. I mean, they've got a losing record without Judge. Yeah. <laughs> and it ain't close. Yeah. It's a big hole, man. It's a big hole. And I think this is, you know, we had said it was not worst case last week because it wasn't broken. Yeah. But I mean, no timeline. Yeah, that's not great. At least if it were broken, you had a timeline. Right. Because then you would know, okay, it's going to take this long. And now we're just like in limbo waiting for this. And I don't like that. We're going to sit here for a while, not really know what's going on and then wait for them to maybe make another move or something just in case you know because what if it's worse than they thought and he's out yeah. until like the all-star break for another month or something yikes don't even speak that um other injuries bad news about <laughs> about greg <laughs> allen six to eight weeks for greg allen hip flexor strange uh strain sorry oh that's a really long time <laughs> that's a long time man that's a really long and you know yankee fans of course are freaking out because Aaron Hicks goes to Baltimore and he's suddenly hitting. It's a very small sample size, but as soon as he went to Baltimore and was able to grow facial hair, he started hitting and, you know, coupled with this injury and well, coupled with the Greg Allen injury and the uh, judge injury, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes it more aerodynamic. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what, yeah. that's what it is. I mean, it just that beard, balances swing out. That beard was back in like two days. It's amazing how yeah. fast guys beards grow because i mean joey gallows yeah. was within like five hours of him being traded it was unbelievable <laughs> so long as your name isn't steve granado uh <laughs> willie calhoun stacy we've had some weird injuries this year <laughs> willie calhoun hit by a pitch in his elbow by carlos rodon and a sun on sunday in a live bp session when that tweet came across <laughs> i literally said out loud to no one because no one else was home i said are you bleeping kidding me are you bleeping kidding me right now what on earth is happening who has the voodoo doll with the yankee cap on i don't understand what's going on i really don't it's unbelievable at least he played yes i mean it could have been worse but just for that to happen. it just feels like piling on at this point you know it's crazy. It's seriously crazy <laughs> and other crazy things this is maybe the weirdest injury of the season stays oh john God. sterling got hurt <sighs> Hit by a foul ball on Saturday. Ugh. And he got hit, man. Yeah, that right. hit him. I can't, like, the video came out, obviously. And, you know, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. Like, it came out. I watched it. I went, I don't know if they should have put this out. Right. Because <laughs> it was, was scary. Like, this is kind of brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's scary. He's okay. 
He had a bandage on his head. Justin Turner, who hit the foul ball, signed a ball. They put a Band-Aid on it <laughs> and gave it to Sterling. They took a picture of it on Susan Waldman's um, IG. And uh, he put out a message before Sunday night's game and said that he's okay. But I mean, the man is like, what, 83, 84? It's just, I mean, it's scary for anyone to get hit with a foul ball in the face, but you know, he's wearing glasses and it's just, it could have been, it could have been a lot worse actually. Yeah. Um, he's actually really lucky because if it had been more here, cause it really hit him here. If you're yeah. not watching on YouTube, it hit more the side of his glasses, not the bridge or his nose. It could have yeah. been so the, much worse. Or the glasses itself could have yeah. shattered the glass. Yeah. Uh, man, but, that's so scary. I mean, the Yankees injury bug <laughs> or injury. Don't, don't go anywhere near that team right now. I mean, I feel like, you know, we're going to have something happen to us just for covering them. I know. I know. It's like a ceiling tile is going to fall off during an episode one day. Yeah. It's going to bang me in the head. Uh, <laughs> crazy. Crazy weekend. Uh, Yankees obviously couldn't get the job done. They'll get a couple of days off here, man. I, just give them the days off. They No BP, no stretching, no nothing, man. Just stay away from the ballpark. No live BP session. Just shut it down. Quarantine <laughs> this team. Or wrap them uh, in bubble wrap something. Yeah. <laughs> everybody everybody uh and hey everybody else out there be safe don't get yeah. hurt I, just because yeah. you're watching this i'm scared that we're not cursing the whole world <laughs> hey uh make sure to drop your questions for fan mail friday here in our comment section as you guys always do we love that you're a part of the show and we love being able to do that with you guys the subway series starts tomorrow on tuesday on sirius xm as always and of course we will preview that subway series tomorrow here on locked on yankees with our good friend ryan finkelstein uh, who joins us from the Locked On Mets podcast. He's a great, smart guy, and uh, I'm excited to talk with him. It's been a while since I've gotten to chat with him, uh, so it's going to be a good good time to catch up and, and talk a little Subway series. But yeah, that's all coming up tomorrow, so make sure you hit subscribe on wherever you listen or watch to uh, watch Locked On Yankees. And that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.